So Vim never ceases to amaze me. It turns out that Vim actually has a built-in session management system, but this doesn't mean that all of the session management plugins are redundant because it's not session management in the same way that something like Tmux is, where everything you do is just automatically saved, and if you quit out of the window, it's just automatically returned. It works a little bit differently to that, and I would say that without some of the extra stuff you can do, it's more akin to something like workspace management. Okay, so the absolute basic way this works is as follows. Let's say that we have, I don't know, my ZSH emp file open, and also my bash profile open up in a separate split. We could also have tabs as well, but these splits are just fine for the demonstration purposes. So if we want to go and save the session, what we do is we go and run the mk session command and then define where we want to save it to. So in this case, I'm going to save it to my .config slash nvim slash session, but you can save this in your .vim slash session or really anywhere else you want to save it. It just makes sense to keep it with all of your other files for the editor. So I'm going to just call the file test.vim. Okay. So if we go and quit out of Vim now and actually bring it back open, what we can do from here is go and run source. So this is the same command you'd run if you want to resource your VimRC or anything like that. And then basically just source whatever the session file we just had was. So in this case, .config nvim session. And then we only have one in there, which is our test.vim. And that brings everything back or at least most things back. So we're going to be making use of three constructs that exist inside of Vim. We have sessions, views, and the Shardar file. So a session is basically the information required to rebuild the layout. It's a collection of views and the information to basically put your cursor back to where it was and just some other basic information like that. I did say it's not the same as a Tmux session. So if you go and close Vim without saving your session, it won't go and keep the changes you made to the file. So if we were to say like delete some lines in here and then restore the session, if we don't save the file here, the changes won't be saved. We also have a view. So as I said, a session is a collection of views. The views are basically the information about each of the individual buffers. So this buffer right here is a view. This buffer right here is a view. If I had some tabs, each of the splits in the tabs would be views, so on and so forth. So you might be wondering then, what is actually being saved? So everything that gets saved by a session is basically controlled by the session options variable, and the defaults for it are saving empty windows, saving all of the buffers, saving the current directory you're in, saving all the folds that you have. So if you have some of the folds open, some of them closed, basically it will remember the states of the folds. If you have any help windows open, it will remember the help windows. If you set any local options, it will remember those, and it will remember the size of the windows. But there's extra information like your command history and things like that, which won't be saved by a session. And all of that gets handled by the Shardar file, otherwise known as the shared data file. Now, you've been using the shared data file without even knowing it, so if I was to say close Vim, and then I go and reopen it, as you're going to notice, I still have my command history here, and that's because every single time you quit out of Vim, the shared data file gets written to, and then when you reload, it will get reread. But this is just the default Shardar file. You can actually go and create extras and then source them as you need them. So if you want to have a specific Shardar file for your session, you can go and very easily do that. Now, you can also go and modify what the Shardar actually does keep, but we'll be sticking with the defaults for today because that's what you've been using this entire time with Vim anyway, and it's stored everything you've needed it to, so it's not really that big of a deal to worry about. So basically what it's going to do is pick up the rest of the data that actually matters. So your command line and your pattern matching history, the text that's stored in the registers. If you have any marks in files, those will be stored. It'll store your buffer list and it will store any global variables. So I showed you how to load a session from inside of Vim, but you can also go and load it from outside as well. So let's say you have one workspace that you always work with and you just want to populate it with files whenever you work with Vim. So the way we go and do that is by running either Vim or NeoVim. The option is going to be exactly the same. So I'm going to be doing it with NeoVim. So dash capital S. So this is the option for loading a session and then basically just pass in the path to the session. So in this case, I'm going to say dot config nvim in my session and then test.vim. And as you're gonna see, it reloads the same thing we had before. And when you load a session, regardless of whether it's through the option or through the command, a variable is gonna be set with the path to the actual session. So that variable is v colon this underscore session. And as you can see, that's the path of the session we just loaded. Now, 
if you're going to be using this variable, you're probably going to want to know when a session was loaded. So there's an auto command event for this as well called session load post, which basically happens every single time you source a session. So maybe it'd be useful to combine this with something like say buff win leaves. So that basically will run every single time a buffer is closed. So what you could do is every single time a buffer is closed, check if it's the last buffer. And if it is the last buffer, write to your Shardar file and write to your session file. And that might be the best way to have it set up automatically, but I'm not big on Vim scripts. So there might be a better way to do so. So I've been talking about writing to your Shardar file. So let's actually see how we go about doing that. This is incredibly simple to do. Basically what happens is we run the w shardar command for write shardar. And then if we include an exclamation mark after it, what it's going to do is only write to the file. If you don't include the exclamation mark, it's going to read from that file first and then write to it. So generally you don't want to be doing that. So we're going to go and save it to the dot config slash nvim slash shardar. And then let's give it the name test.vim. Now, if you don't include a path, it's just going to go and overwrite the default Shardar file, and that will completely defeat the point of what we're trying to do. And as for reading the Shardar file, basically what we do is we run r Shardar, and we're going to run it with an exclamation mark again, because this will make it so any information that is already set will be overridden by what we read from this Shardar file. Now, I'm not sure why that's not the default behavior, but that's what we have to do. So let's go and read from that one we just set. So config slash nvim slash shardar slash test dot vim. And there we go. That file has now been read. Now in the case of make session, if you include an exclamation mark for that one, if there is a session with that name that already exists, it's going to go and overwrite that session. If you don't include the exclamation mark, it won't overwrite it. You can also go and make views for individual files as well. However, I see less of a point to actually do so. So let's actually go and make that view. Let's move the cursor down to, I don't know, this line right here. So line 77. And if we just go and run the make view command, it's going to go and assign a name to it for us. Now, we can also go and assign a number as well. So we can have 10 predefined views. And then when we load the view, we can select which number we want to use, but I'm not going to bother with the number. You can also go and include a path, but then when you want to load that view from the path, you will have to basically specify the entire path. So generally, I would recommend just using the basic version of make view or assign it a number. You probably don't need more than 10 views of the exact same file. So if we go and run this now and then quit out of this session, and if we reopen up Vim, and open up my zshemp file. I don't know why I didn't open that up from the outside. And then run the load view command. As we'll see, it takes us back to line 77. Now, when you're loading a view that you've set a path to, you don't use the load view command. Instead, you use the source command. I'm not sure why it's like that, but that's just what you have to do. Now, I did mention that when you make a session, it will actually saw empty buffers. So one interesting thing you can try out is let's say that this layout is the absolute perfect layout for you. And every single time you work on a coding project, this is what you want to do. So what you could do is actually save this inside of a session and then reload it every single time you want to use it. Now, I did notice that before it was acting a bit weirdly, and I'll show you that in just a moment. So let's go and save this to dot config slash nvim slash session and let's just call it workspace.vim because this is basically a workspace at this point rather than a session so let's go and quit out of all of this and if we go and open up vim again and rerun the source command as we'll notice it doesn't actually restore everything it is restoring empty buffers but for some reason my horizontal split is now missing now if someone knows why that's the case feel free to let me know. I know that if I had a file in that split, it would have been restored just fine. So there's clearly something that I'm missing here. So besides that little hiccup, which could have been a NeoVim problem as well, I haven't checked that either. The basic workflow is write session, write Shardar, and then when you want to go and load it, load session, load Shardar. It's pretty simple like that. If you do want some of that extra fancy session management stuff that actually acts like Tmux session management, there are plugins that do exist like session.vim, which do make that a little bit easier to do. So if you don't want to go and write it all inside of Vim script yourself, that's probably the best way to go and do that. Or obviously you could go and run Tmux or any sort of standalone session manager.
So I think that's pretty much everything for session management, at least at a basic level. There is more to the Shardar file, and I may go and cover that in its own separate video, but I think that what I went over today for it is enough to get you started. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Corbinian, Andrew, Craig, Nathan, Monsadar, Chico Bento, Joseph Pitti, Rogue, Tony, Brennan, John, Marek Mikkel, Nate Doc, Nevite, Poe, Tease, and Zilva. If you want to go on support my work, there's links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, start leave pay, all of that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out. <laughs>